Alright, so they updated this game again. Technically, they updated it the other day. I want to say last night, last evening. But I wasn't able to get to it until today. So, it's already almost going to be 10 o'clock at night. And this was updated technically around eight evening time yesterday. And probably about almost a whole day late. So, <laughs> looks like they have finally decided to release Karand. I'll try to get her, but she's not somebody I really even care about. She kind of reminds me of like a reskin of the Electra Archon, because a lot of characters in this game kind of remind me of her because of her stance. Um, we could try to get f for whoever. I don't really care who I get. Um, normally, I don't do weapon banners. I wonder if I should try to do weapon banners instead. Uh... So this is Alhatham's blade. Light up while you're in Citron. And then we have Quaran's blade, which is Absolution. Deadly pack. Crit critical damage is increased by 20%, increasing the value of Bond of Life. So this is why I don't really like weapons like this. The Bond of Life weapons I really hate. Mainly because when you use like an elemental skill with this weapon, it puts a debuff on your character, and the Bond of Life is like this thing like this bracket bar that fills around your life and it cuts your character's life by half. And if your character doesn't have a whole lot of life to begin with, this basically just like screws you over really hard. It kind of sucks too because like you'll like the way the weapon looks but then they go and add the bond of life effect on it and, it, and I just, I'm immediately uninterested. So, <laughs> I also managed to get Sethos, who I was actually interested in and really wanted. I got him in one roll. I literally did one pull and I got him automatically. Um, so, that's funny. Real funny. I'm trying to build him, but like I said, I literally just got him a little bit ago. And I can get him to like level 50 right now, but I'm missing some Electro Gems. I'm missing these. So I can get him to level 50. Oh, fuck. Nope. Um. Yeah, you drink that water. You drink the water as you disappear into the purpleness that is happening. He literally drank the air. Fucking air drinker. Anyway. So this is the new story quest. Usually story quests usually add on, and they're really important. So we're going to try to focus on that. And then, if I'm able to, maybe I'll be able to focus on Kaloran's story chapter as well. Which is Silent Night. That's the name of the song. Uh, so, Rapiria Chapter Act 1. I like Kaloran as a character. I'm not saying I don't. It's just like, I'm not focused on her right now. She's not somebody I feel like I absolutely need. But if I get her, it's whatever. Um... Okay. Perfect! It's you two! I have a commission here that has your names written all over it. That's symbol. In fact, I'd even go so far as to say you're the only ones for the job. Also, Catherine's voice actress is Ayaka's voice actress. She voices both characters. Um... Also, it's really, really hot where I live. It's been in the 90s, and I have I have a fan that's on the PS4 to keep it cool on the top. And then I have one to my right, so... I have my TV pretty loud, but if you hear the fan, there's really nothing I can do about it, because it's too hot without it on. It should be a problem, though. The only for the job! Huh. If I thought it was really that important, it's probably some Archon class right? Archon class. I never heard of that classification before. For sure we're happy to take this on. Which Archon do you need us to deal with today? I'm gonna make a joke. <laughs> the Adventurers Guild doesn't employ that kind of classification system. In fact, this commission is also probably not nearly as intimidating as what we're expecting. <laughs> Don't know why I'm sounding like Nicky Mouse. Okay. All it asks us to do is to find the missing person. Hmm. Now look on Looming's face. She's like, what? Do what? Do I look like a fucking police to you? Huh? Then why did you say we were the only ones for the job? 
because this person is your brother. Ha! <laughs> I came across this commission when we were doing our backlog not too long ago. Oh. I bet you it is. It's like, because, uh, if you remember correctly, we were trying to search for our sibling. And we put out papers for him. Like, if you go back and look at, like, in Mondstadt or Leoa, you can find missing persons posters everywhere that we asked them to put out for us. And I do think it is kind of funny, because in Mondstadt we stuck him around, like, at the Tavern the Angel Share, where Delik works at. And then they were posted around randomly in Leo as well. But I can't remember if there was any in the regions we literally just came from. Like, I don't know if there's any in Inazuma. I think there's some in Inazuma. But I can't remember if we actually put any in Sumeru or in Fontaine. Because Fontaine was the last region that was just released. And I don't remember us ever putting down any missing persons posters anywhere. Normally, they have a scene where the character says, Well, help me do some posters or something. But... When I think back on it, I don't think Fontaine has any. It seems simple, but our records indicate that over a dozen successive efforts to complete it have all ended in failure, despite attempts by several accomplished and renowned adventurers. With the reputation of the Adventurers Guild and the performance of the Sumeru branch at stake, it's in our best interest to assign this commission to the adventurer with the highest completion rate over the past few years. Well, that's us for sure! Flattery will get you everywhere, Paimon. But I can't guarantee we'll be able to complete it either. Flattery will get you everywhere. I don't know what to say. Because I feel like if I say, oh yeah, I'm so cool, everybody knows me, it kind of sounds fucking stuck up. And I, I'm kind of more on the truthful side, so I'd be like, well, I can't guarantee that I'll be able to do it either, though. <laughs> All, All I'm, I'm asking, asking is for you to you give it your best, best shot. shot. Mm. If it proves to be beyond your capabilities as well, I'll talk to the commissioner about canceling the commission. Okay, so who are we looking for? And what is it about this commission that's made it so hard to complete? Because you're looking for a spirit that doesn't exist in this world. This commission was jointly issued by the residents of Yamara Village. They say one of their own villagers has gone missing, but the problem is, they don't know the missing person's name. They can only provide information about his general appearance. He's a blonde-haired guy. So if you remember one of the other main world quests we did, the, Ver the Varuna Vimara or whatever, Varuna... I think it was called Varuna something. Those people mention a blonde person that helped the Aranara. And that's why he, they, uh... That quest was named after him. Like, his Aranara name was Varuna. And I think they're talking about Aether, but I could be wrong. Um, and what's different about areas in Sumeru is the Aranara have a world that's different than the one we are in, known as the Dream World. And since I've done a lot of quests in this area, normal people can't see Aranara, and normal people can't enter what you would call their Dream World. It's basically like a mirror world of Ara World that normal people can't access. So I bet you the person that they're looking for somehow stumbled upon that, that hidden world, and it became trapped. And that's why they can't get out. The reason why I'm saying that is the way it's like about a dream. Is if you look up the preview page for this, it's like her laying with her brother in a field of flowers with like Dane's lift by a tree. And it seems to be hinted that it's all a dream. And in the dream world, anything is possible and anything can happen. Uh, they're, they're all from the, the same, same village, village, but they, they don't, don't even know his name? Because he's mystical, fantastical. Hmm. If some of the adventurers have failed to complete this commission, maybe this missing villager doesn't exist at all. Could it be some sort of a prank or something? Unlikely. Several Third villagers came by to issue the commission, the commission and, and, and judging, judging by, by their, their appearance and tone of voice, they seem incredibly, incredibly sincere. sincere. It, it certainly didn't seem like a joke, joke to them. them. Besides, putting up a commission requires a processing fee. There aren't there are many upsides, upsides to a prank that costs more to carry out. True, that would be a little strange. In any case, it would probably be best to go to Imara Village and ask around first. The Adventurers Guild does have some information on hand, but I would say anything you can learn directly from the villagers would be far more reliable. The best way to avoid misdirection is to go to the source. Alright then, let's go! I'm starting to get really curious about this whole thing. Oh no. Chapter 4, Act 4, Bedtime Story. So this is one of the main quests. Oh god. 
Yeah, because I've done a lot of the world quests out here. Um, I wonder if that's what it is. I need to turn in my things, though. Oops. Add I need to turn these in. Thank, Thank you for coming. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. And it would have been easier if you gave me some electro, man. I need those for Sethus. Ah, <sighs> shoot. Boy, he just falls down everything. Yeah, like, I've done a lot of the world quests out here. And some of those Baranara world quests are kind of hard to even find. Surprisingly, I feel like my journey's been weird. A lot of the world quests I've done have all been found accidentally. By me just like exploring some one of those people that go around and talk to like every NPC. So a lot of the world quests I found were always by accident. And believe it or not, all of the quests that I found by accident turned out to be like the longest but also the funnest and I really liked the story. Like the Sakura cleansing, root cleansing in, in uh, Inazuma. I found that one by accident and it was fun. It was really long though. And the Vamara quest that I'm talking about, the Varuna quest that I did, that one took me four months to complete. So it was, there was like four parts to it. Why are we so freaking loud? If this commission is really as challenging as Catherine made it out to be, we're going to need to carry out a very detailed investigation. Why do you have to kind of say it like this? What is wrong with you? Oh my god. Hello, hello. Hello there. You looking to buy something? I do business in this area. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. Oh, oh no, 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 we're adventurers. Catherine sent us to look into a commission here in the Marble Village. Ah, so you hear about that, then. Ah, you're not the first, that's for sure. We've certainly made a lot of trouble for you all. This guy sounds like he's about to die. To be honest, we aren't holding out much hope. Many adventurers have made their way out here. Confident they'd be able to help us, only to leave soon after with nothing to show for their efforts. Hmm. We've pretty much had it up to here in questions, and the area around the village has practically been overturned in search of clues. But no one has been able to make any headway. Hmm. So, this person we're looking for, what's his name? Where do he live? Does he have any relatives? We don't know. Uh, I don't know. I really have no clue. I couldn't tell you. Okay. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to sound short with you. I was actually just giving you my answer to your questions. I know it may seem like we don't have anything to offer by way of information, but I promise you, we all have a very strong impression of it. When you live in the same village as someone, you develop a lot of memories together, you know? We just don't know the specifics. Maybe we did at one point, but that information is long gone by now. You know what that makes me think of? We fixed the Ermensol tree, and the Ermensol controls everybody's memories. That's like what happened to Skara. He basically went into the tree and erased himself out of the tree, so anyone and everybody who knew him forgot him. The only reason why we remembered who he was was because we're not from this world. Anybody that actually is in this world and actually from it will lose their memory if you mess with the memories of the Ermensol tree, which is like the tree of the wisdom. It's like the tree of the world. Everything that's ever happened in this world is recorded in that tree. And everybody is bound to it. So I'm thinking... They only vaguely remember him. But the reason why they can't is it could be our brother who's not from this world. And that's why they can't remember him. Because, like, maybe something happened with a tree. It was corroded and it was attacked years ago. So maybe it damaged the tree's memories, which in turn damaged theirs. Which is why they don't know his name, they only vaguely remember him. It would give a dead giveaway if they said, actually, he kind of looked like you. I'm waiting for somebody to say that to her. At, at, at least that's, that's what everyone, everyone in the village seems, seems to think. We've, We've all exchanged, exchanged what we know, and that, that was the only logical, logical conclusion. Alright, specific to then, then, what, what kind, kind of person, person was he? Young guy, in his early 20s probably. Incredibly kind sort of person. Always willing to lend a helping hand. I chat with him when I didn't have any customers. I even saw him stick out his neck for others on more than one occasion. <laughs> Very interesting guy, I know. Or it could be somebody else entirely. Hard to say. Now that we started talking about him, he didn't seem nearly as down in the dumps as he did before. Seems like he left a pretty good impression on you. But of course, 
Everyone in the village is pretty fond of him. We wouldn't have issued that commission in the place. And it can't be Dainsliff, because Dainsliff isn't even part of Samara. He's part of Conroe. There aren't many young people like him nowadays. So genuine and pure. To think that he had just up and disappeared one day. I just hope nothing bad happened. Could he have just moved away without telling anyone? No. He's not the type to leave without saying goodbye. And anyway, moving away without being seen by a single person in the village? There's no way he would have been able to manage that. Huh. All right, thanks for the information. Where can we go ask around some more? Hmm. <laughs> this is why it's good to have Scarra. You can fly across the ship. Oh, don't drop me. Come on. Haters. It's that guest side here. Yeah, what's up? Hi, Hi Papa Madea. We're here to help you look for the, the guy that's gone missing. Ah, so, so that's, that's what brings you to these parts. Coming, Coming all this way, way for our sake. sake. That's, That's so, so very kind of you. With, With your, your help, help, I trust I that young man's case is in good hands. Bro, you are putting way too much hope on me. Did you tell us a bit about him? No, absolutely not. Of course. I'm, I'm happy to help, help any way I can. can. With, With my, my failing eyesight, I'm afraid I can't offer much, much about his appearance. Everybody I do I remember do hearing the sound of his voice. Not, Not recently, recently, of course. course. That, that loss, loss has left, left me feeling quite, quite empty. empty. I don't, I don't think, think his parents, parents are still, still living in the village. But, but somehow, somehow he never he seemed lonely. lonely. In, in fact, fact, he was, he was usually, usually the one, one offering companionship, companionship to others. others. He would he often would take time to visit the elderly or play with the orphans in the village. And whenever someone had something on their mind, he was there to listen with open ears. He always, he always knew, knew just, just what, what to say. say. As, As the village chief, I owe him many thanks. Helping villagers navigate difficult moments in their lives should have been one of my responsibilities. But he was often the one rising to the occasion. Wow, he seems like such a nice and gentle person. No wonder his disappearance affected you all so much. But, but um... You wouldn't happen to know any details about his name, address, or family situation, right? I'm ashamed to admit it, but I just can't remember. No matter how I look at it, I should know those things. But for some reason, no matter how hard I try to remember, the information just doesn't come. Perhaps my age really has caught up with me this time. Oh, it's okay. There's no need to force yourself to try to remember. We'll figure something out. Walks away. Well, Trevor, what do you think? There's probably more to this case than meets the eye. A lot of things are not adding up. They're both right. I'm gonna just say this. I think so too. Like, like the name thing. thing. It's so it's weird, weird that, that no one remembers his name. name. And, and nobody, nobody has been able to tell us anything, anything about his family, about his family or, or where he lived. lived. It's like it's this guy's been erased from reality or something. He's someone who only exists in people's memories. I would say it's more like... Wait, so you're saying it's not that he's been erased, necessarily, but more like he never existed to begin with? Okay, I'm just gonna need some time to process that one. Someone who only exists in people's memories? Could it be like what happened with Greater Lord Rukadavata? Like some sort of mass alteration of people's memories? You two are the adventurers who just arrived, right? You're here for the Bamara Village Commission? Lady, I saw you walking in the distance. You'd have to come up on me like that. Yep, yep sure. Are. We were just looking into the case. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank goodness you haven't given up. I've been so worried the Adventurers Guild might cancel our commission. Oh, they're about to. My name is Atosa, by the way. I grew up here in Vimara Village. Anyway, I just wanted to say, please keep searching for a missing villager. I'm begging you. You have to find him. We'll certainly try our best. Yeah, we'll do great. We'll give it our best shot. So, were you close to the missing villager? Are there any leads you can give us? 
I'm not sure this counts as a lead, but follow me. There's a place I'd like to show you. Oh my god. I'm gonna throw you into a teapot and make you turn psychotic. <laughs> I don't know, I was gonna say something completely different, I don't know why I said that. I was gonna say I'll throw you into a teapot and turn you into my slave master, but I don't know why. Ugh. Turn you into my little toy, dress you up so you can play tea party with me. That's what I was originally going for. Oh, let me guess, he got sucked into the tree. Fucking what? Is this the place? Under this tree? Sure. Yep. yep. I know it doesn't look like much, but this place is very meaningful to me. It's so full of memories. Uh... We used to always sit together under this tree and talk. Sometimes we would look up at the clouds in the sky or stop to feel the wind against our skin. We could sit there for hours at a time, never realizing how long it had been. I was actually, actually adopted, adopted by the people of Lamar Village. The forest the rangers found me in the woods as a child. As a child. I was surrounded by such good people, people and growing up in the village was so lively. Still, Still there, there were times, times when I couldn't help but feel incredibly alone. Because you didn't belong. She's not from there. <sighs> uh, how, how should, should I, I put it? it? When, when something's, something's bothering me, or when you have good news to share, you always, always want, want to talk about it with somebody. But, but for the for longest long time, time, I didn't know who I could talk to or, or if I should say anything at all. Everyone, everyone has their, their own problems to deal with. with. Even, Even if, if I, I might, might want to confide in others, others, I don't I want to become a burden. That's what family is for. I think I get what you mean. <laughs> really? really? You know exactly how I feel? I used to have somebody like that, a family member that I could talk to no matter what. And now I have a lot of friends who understand me and would be happy to hear me out. Aww. Oh, that sounds really nice. You're quite lucky. When it comes to our missing villager, well... I guess I you could, could say, say that, that to me. He felt, he felt like, like both. both. A, family a family member I could rely on and a friend who could really understand me. Oh, do you see the picture of the, of the two up there on the top that I just noticed that's kind of fucking weird looking? Up there on the tree, next to the leaf, there's like a little boy and a little girl there, and I think it's supposed to be her and him as a child. You wouldn't notice it if you're staring down at the text. I happened to just look up and saw it in the tree. It kind of looks weird. <laughs> no matter what came my way, I knew I could always talk to him. He was so thoughtful and pure. And patient, too. Whenever I talked to him, he would always seem so interested, as if the things I was describing were just as important to him as they were to me. Ever since he disappeared, there's been so much I wanted to tell him. So it can be our brother, then, because... That little boy that was in the tree next to who, who, who I guess was supposed to be her as a kid, they had black hair, so. No, no, no none, none of those, those things, things matters, matters now. now. I just, I just really, really want, want to see him again. again. Wow, you two, you two must have been, been really close. close. Did he even tell you anything, anything about himself? himself? Hmm. He, he mostly, mostly just, just talked, talked about interesting things he saw around, around the village. village. He'd share, share a lot, lot of his, his own, own wild, wild ideas, ideas as well. well. Oh, oh right. right! I did I ask him about his parents once. But all he said was, they're, they're not, not here anymore. anymore. I, didn't I didn't know whether that meant they had left the village or passed, passed away. away. And, and I didn't, I didn't want, want to cry. Hmm. Still not, not much, much to go off of. Look at me. Talking your ear off and still nothing to show for it. I'm sorry I wasn't more help. Don't say that. You helped us understand him better. The last time I talked this much in one go was when we were still together. Oh, come to think of it. Every time we talked, it always seemed to be around dusk. Just like right now. Time always passed by really slowly. Even when it felt like we'd been talking for hours, the sun would still be at the same position in the sky. Well, time always seems to pass slower when you're relaxed, right? Uh, what's, what's wrong, Catherine? It was the same time of day, and time never seemed to pass. 
It was always the same time of day, and time never seemed to pass. Based on what we've learned, this is definitely not a regular missing persons case. But Atosa just told me about time could be the key to unraveling this whole mystery. Go look on Paimon's face. Hey, look at those hood over there. Doesn't, Doesn't it seem like they're, they're acting, acting a little, little strange? strange? He stole my damn sweet roll. Oh my god! That abyss mage, bro. Uh, the abyss order. Could they, Could they be, be the, the ones behind, behind all of this? We already know that the abyss order is our brother's henchman, so... What the... What? Huh? It's getting closer. Uh oh, we've been spotted! Quick, 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 quick. Uh. Face my win, you loser. Oh, why did his. It sounds so monotone. Yeah, my sound effects aren't playing. That's okay. Oh my god, my sound effects are broken. I don't need it, but hold on. Hold on, hold on. Eat an orange. No, actually. Eat a steak. Um... I was eating my chips in the background. And then they're like, oh, you're gonna have to fight. And I'm like, really? I was trying to eat my lemon lays, you suck. It's okay. My sound is freaking out. I don't know why it's so loud, kind of. Ugh. Thank you so, so much. much. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting, expecting monsters, monsters to show up. up. If you hadn't, hadn't been, been here, here, I'm not, not sure what I would have done. done. It was no trouble. The question we should be asking is, what is the Abyss Order doing around here? Hmm, now that I think about it, the healing trolls around the Nora village have been a lot more active lately. They seem agitated and would often attack anything in sight. Chief Amadea doesn't allow the children to play in the area around the village anymore. So, if you haven't really gotten into this game, the Abyss Order are actually the Conrians. Same thing with the Haley trolls. When the main Archon War broke out 500 years ago, the Conrians were cursed by the gods. And a lot of them turned into the Abyss Mages and the Healy Trolls. And the only two human people that we know from there is Kaya and Dainsliff. Dainsliff was actually a, a royal knight in some army that apparently we know. Basically he serves Aether and Lumine's family wherever the hell they're from. Which people keep speculating that Aether and Lumine are really from Conria. And then when we talk to Nahida, she actually said that our brother was from this world. Which wouldn't make sense because... In the beginning of the game, it said that Aether and Lumine crossed dimensions and they were able to enter different worlds. And it was believed that they were actually going from world to world conquering it. Because they had like the angel wings and they're supposed to be the reincarnation of stars. And Aether and Lumine are over 500 years old and are considered to be gods themselves. But everybody in this world doesn't know that. And even Lumine herself doesn't know what she used to be. And she has a Gnosis as well and only gods have Gnosises. And at the beginning of the game, when you get caught by the unknown god whose name was Asmodee, who I believe they changed to Estelle, they changed her name. Um, I mean, I've seen a file online where they said her name was Estelle, like E-S-T-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. um, because her name was originally Asmodee, but then they changed it to Estelle. Everybody keeps trying to say that she's actually another character from Honkai Star Rail. Um, forget her name right now. Uh, I forget what the hell her name was. Kiana Arslan or something like that. Um, but apparently when she captures us, she steals our Gnosis. So it's actually believed that we are gods from another world. But it also kind of doesn't make sense because if we are also originally from Conria and we're actually from this world and we just didn't know. But Conrians didn't have a god. So how could we be gods? See, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. So, but Aether and Lumine do have a light gnosis, and they do have wings, and they do have, like, lightning swords. And it's not really known how or why they have that. Um, 
But yeah, the Healy Trills and the Abyss Order are Conrians that are being controlled by our brother who's known as the Abyss Prince. But if you're playing as Aether, then I guess they are followers of the Abyss Princess if Looming is the evil character in your game. I have it reversed in mine. So those people are following Aether. So that's where we're like, what the hell are they doing here? Hmm. Maybe the Abyss Order really is involved. Well, we should, we should head, head back and check out the situation from our village, village just, just in case. case. If the Abyss Order, Order is plotting something, then that could spell, spell trouble, trouble for the villagers. So the main thing that the Abyss Order wants when the last time we talked to Aether is he says he wants to topple the thrones in Celestia because he's blaming the gods for why they destroyed Conria. And he's trying to fight for the Conrian people, which are the Haley Churls and the Abyss Mages. Um, he wants to basically destroy Celestia, and what they mean by the thrones is there should be a throne for each element, for each Archon, each god in Celestia, and he wants to destroy it. And he wants to try to create a mechanized god, and I think that was like the god that was in the purple crystal that we seen in a dream, and the... Was it in, in, in Conria or in, in Kanomiya? When we talked to one of the Conrian guys, he like led us to some underground place and there was a crystal of a god that we talked to and he's like you don't know me but I'm the sinner um, and I think that was the guy they were trying to turn into the god but I don't really remember it too well because it was so long ago but yeah they want to try to make a mechanical god to just to defeat the other gods in Celestia but it, it kind of just doesn't make a lot of sense right now wait a second that person it's Dainsliff what the fuck is he doing? Dainsley? Ah, it's, it's you two. Hello, Yuri Lowenthal. Oh, a friend, a friend of, yours? of yours? I guess you can say that. He was a knight in an army that didn't serve me, but... Uh... Well, well I'll, I'll leave you all to him. him. I should I'll head back, back to the, to the village, village and check up on Chief Amadea and the others, others anyway. anyway. Oh, see you later! later. Yep. yep, see you later, later Tosa! Tosa. She just stares at Dane Slip like, what is with his cave? Why do you always have to pop up out of nowhere like that? Is it your life's mission, life's mission to jump to the air or something? <laughs> it's hardly hard personal. personal. All, All intention is for that matter. As, as long as you and I are both in pursuit of the Abyss Order, we're bound to cross paths. Mm. Yeah, but the way you're dressed, you stand out so bad. Couldn't fucking take you anywhere. So you're here to the Abyss Order again. What? The monster you're fighting, fighting just now. Naturally. <laughs> Hold on. Are you not here for the same purpose? We're also on our trail, but I admit we ran into them on accident. Hmm. No matter. It may, it may have, taken have taken you a while to catch on, but I'm sure you've also realized by now that there's something strange about this place. Yes. The Abyss Order is most certainly planning something in this area. Or worse, their plan, plan could already be in motion. So do you think the Abyss Order is behind the Hilly Trail activity in the area? As things stand, I highly doubt that is their primary motive. I would imagine the increased Hilly Trail activity is merely a byproduct of whatever it is they're really trying to accomplish. Still, the Hilly Trail activity is causing a lot of problems for the people here. We should stick around for a while and protect the village, don't you think? The best way to protect them is by figuring out what the Abyss Order is truly planning. That is how we prevent further tragedy. Well, let's see what more we can learn from the villagers, and then after that, you also owe us many answers for fucking disappearing on me like a freak. And you shall have them. I never, I never intended, intended to hide, to hide anything, anything from you. Uh, but then why did you... But the dream in the mirror, you... Don't, Don't worry. worry. There, should there should be, be ample, ample time, time to talk. To talk. <laughs> uh, it's the sound of me being frustrated. You return to the village to gather intel based on what you've learned. And you question the villagers until eventually the sky grows dark. Under the moonlight, I lost my mind. Ha, ha. Ah, so, that so that was, was the commission that brought you here to the Mara village. village. Yeah. Someone, Someone who seems to only exist in people's, people's memories. memories. That, is that is indeed quite intriguing. I would, I would agree, agree that, that it's, it's unlikely you have a simple, simple missing persons case on your hands. hands. However, However, 
Any possible connection to the Abyss Order is still unclear. It appears all we have by way of clues is increased Hillichar activity. And that is certainly not much to go on. Well, how about the intel you promised me? Right! That mysterious voice she heard in her brother's memory. The one who called himself a sinner. Who's he? I was just talking about that, oh my god! <laughs> Tell me. Tell me right now. Traveler, let me, let me ask, ask you this. Huh? Do you, you believe, believe your, your sibling, sibling to have betrayed betray you? I want to have faith in him. In a manner of speaking, yes. Well, let's think. What has Ether done to us since the beginning of this game? What has Ether done to me? Let's think about it. Well, he's been spying on me this whole time. He's known exactly where I've been every time. He has caused problems for other people in the world, including messing with Venti's dragon, who's considered a deity. Well, maybe not, but it was still considered an Archon's pet. He was, so he was directly interfering with the Archons, who we all know he hates. Venti is considered a dear friend of mine, and he hurt him, kind of. He caused him to get poisoned by the tainted blood from Dvalin, so Venti was injured when we had first met him. We eventually saved him by purifying the blood, for not only from Dvalin, but from Venti himself. So he directly harmed a god. Then, he decided to side with the Conrians instead of coming with me, and wants to defeat the gods who I've become friends with. So now he's kind of like threatening my friends, Archons who I've helped along the way who mean a lot to me. And he d wants to fight me and isn't giving me any answers. Every time we've ran into him, he's given us some stupid bullshit and then disappeared. The Abyss Order is also something that he controls that he has attacked me. The people that are serving under him have willingly attacked me multiple times, including the Abyss Lectors. If I truly was his sister and he really cared about me, why would he have his henchmen not only interfere with me on numerous times, but directly attack me, therefore harming me? Somebody who's supposed to be my family wouldn't let me come to harm like that, and he has multiple times. Yes. Hmm. I sense hesitation in your words. After, After all, you still, still haven't figured, figured out the whole, whole truth of what happened. happened. There's, There's still hope for the two of you to reconcile. The irreparable, irreparable damage, damage has not, not yet been done. done. I wanted to say I have faith in him, but at this point I fucking just know him. The, the sinner you, you wish, wish to know about, about. his situation is different. He, he and his, his fellow sinners, sinners have long betrayed me, and long betrayed their nation. His name is Vedafon. The vision, I'm loath to admit it. He is also my king, my older brother. What? Your brother? What really happened in Conria back then? Can you tell me? There were five of them. The five sinners of Conria. The wise, Robtitan. The visionary, Vedafomir. Rhindaughter. Rhindaughter. The foul. Certainology and, and Rehir of Solari, Rehir. Ryan daughter was the woman who created Albedo. She's basically his mother. But she disappeared and nobody knows where she went. No, no matter, matter how, how rogue my, my memory may become, uh, I will never forget their names. <laughs> Please. One, One day, <laughs> I shall have my vengeance. Stop! Wait, Wait so <laughs> those names sound really familiar! familiar. Rhyme Daughter is the one who created Albedo. Certainly she is Skirk's master. And Skirk is Child's master. And then we just learned about Dean's brother, Zedifolnir. If he was the voice of the sinner, then the one who inspired Clotar to create the Abyss Order was him. Somehow everything is connected. If that's true. Then the stone slates we found in the ruin in Fontaine, the ones that outline Fontaine's prophecy, that was likely his doing as well. They were once people of great esteem in Kamala, those who carried the hopes of the nation. 
they were the best of their peers, outstanding in their respective fields. Six of us, together. We Why are you whispering to me? We to prevent the disaster. The ones to stop the Vinster King from continuing to rock the foundation of the world. Yet, deep within, the five of them craved something more. They could not resist the call of the Abyss, and divided among themselves a power that could destroy the world. So they became sinners, but also transcendent beings, each in possession of world-shattering power. And when the cataclysm occurred, not one of them stood up in defense of their nation. Not one came forward to prevent the tragedy. And for that, they shall never have my forgiveness. My sibling came into contact with your brother. Indeed. If they are not stopped, the day is sure to come when they will also betray the entire world. It must be hard to talk about all of this. Thanks for telling me. Of course. As I said, I never intended to hide anything from you. So, Dane, what have you been looking into all this time? I've continued to investigate the questions surrounding the Room of Fate. It's been quite some time since the initial operation was launched. By retrieving the Eye of the First Field Tiller, we were able to stop part of their plan from coming to fruition. So we had multiple encounters with Dane, and this was like a long time ago. He wanted to use that Ether wanted to use it to power their so-called mechanized god. And I'm thinking because Dane's brother must be like a disembodied soul, he doesn't have a body anymore. He probably asked Ether and his organization, the Abyss Order, to build him a body. And they needed that to help power it. But we stole it. And we gave it to Dane. Oh, I remember! What did we use it to corrupt Osai and make a god or something? Mm-hmm. Indeed. However, it's obvious that was just some sort of technical experiment. The eye was integral to their plan, yet somehow, despite failing to obtain it, they've skipped the experimental phase and found some other way to keep moving forward. There are many signs pointing to that effect. Then what should we do? It's not too late, is it? Our most pressing concern is to determine the purpose of the room of fate. From there, We'll be, we'll be able, able to, to deduce, deduce the Abyss, Abyss Order's order true objective. But don't we already kind of know what they want? Ether literally said my true wish is to topple the thrones of Celestia, make this world pay for what they did to Conaria. Because uh, in the Archon War, all of the Archons attacked Conaria and destroyed it. That's what the Archon War was. Um, but the problem with that, though, if some of the new gods are new, cr newly created, like Nahida was barely born and barely found 500 years ago, and Ruka Devata had spare, like used up all of her energy in the desert to create um, like springs of life in the pyramids, she used up her dendro and energy to create new life hidden in the desert. And she perished. I don't think she ever took part in the war against Conria because she was too busy fighting a war in the desert. And then A was too busy fighting a giant snake in Inazuma that had killed her sister. Or rather, her sister died in the Archon War at around the same time that she had to fight two entities. I think they said she fought this, a giant snake um, and then a giant, like, the Thunderbird. She had defeated both of them because they attacked Inazuma at the same time. Because when Conroya was attacked, the other nations were also attacked too. Um, apparently... Like abyss hounds and stuff were risen out of the ground from the abyss and were attacking everywhere all at once. So some of the gods were not directly in contact with the destruction of Conria. I want to say the main two gods of the Rain Original War, the only two that actually remain, were Zhongli and Venti. All of the other gods, as we know, were not actually there. All of the other gods have been, out of like the original seven, the only two gods that remain of the original seven are Venti and Zhongli. And Zhongli is the oldest Archon. The other ones were all newly made or were not involved with that war directly because they were doing other things. Nahida was originally was just created and A was grieving the loss of her twin sister. Farina wasn't made yet either. She was just made by uh, Egeria. Or no, Fosolors. 
Jiria was the previous Hydra Archon. She was made by Fosalor. And Fosalor did that to also deceive Celestia. And she, by doing that, broke the Hydra Archon throne permanently. So this is where it's kind of making sense, but not really. Because, like, if he wants to, if Ether wants to, do, like, get rid of all of the gods, Fosalor's permanently broke the Hydra throne in Celestia by using her own Gnosis to kill herself. And she made Farina as a human copy of herself that she cursed for eternity. So, as of right now, no new Hydro Archons will ever be created ever again. The Hydro God is basically dead, permanently. So out of the seven gods, only there's really only six now. So, it kind of doesn't really make sense in that regard. If he really wants to destroy all the gods, the Hydra Archon basically just helped him achieve that. It seems like Celestia, everybody in this world has something against that place. Which is the whole reason why the other Archons willingly kind of gave up their Gnosis. Venti's was stolen, but Zhang Li gave his away willingly to Child. And then A gave hers away to Yai Miko, who then gave it to Skara to trade for our life when he captured us. That was back when he was a Harbinger, but now Skara has nothing to do with them anymore, and because he erased himself out of the Tree of Ermansal, all of the other Harbingers don't know who he is anymore. So he was basically set free. So it kind of just really makes you wonder when you start piecing together everything that you know, and everything that's happened so far. It's very weird. Like, what the hell is really going on? Based, Based on the, on the intel, intel I've gathered, gathered so, so far, far, I suspect the Loom of Fate is related to the ley lines in some way. Because they contain the memories of the world? The ley lines? Traveler, hmm? you were able to observe your siblings' memories last time, yes? Mm -hmm. I believe that was due to the fact that the ley lines in that area were unstable. Yeah, we saw his memories as if though we were him. My recent investigation has shown that a disorder activity in a particular area is usually followed by a series of issues with the ley lines. And one of those things that flows through the ley lines are memories. Wait, then our companion here from our village. The person who seems to exist only in people's memories. Could it be connected? Memories, ley lines, the loom of fate. The missing person that doesn't seem to exist. What's the connection between all this? It's, it's certainly, certainly possible. possible. I'll, I'll join, join your, your investigation, investigation tomorrow. tomorrow. This, this missing, missing person's, person's case could, could very, very well, well turn, turn out, out to be the key, key to unraveling these mysteries. mysteries. Well, if we're teaming up with Dave again, we're gonna need all the energy we can get. Let's try investigating somewhere a little further away tomorrow. A little further away. I thought you said it was happening under around this village. Huh? Oh dear. Oh dear God. I'm a stretch among the dry fish. Can you imagine what that smells like? Where she's standing at? Oh my God. I didn't sleep well either. Well, well, let's go, go find Dane! He's got, got a lot to do today! The sun is burning me alive! <laughs> yeah! Hello, Skara, you beautiful man! <laughs> oh, why is it always up? Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Please don't moan in my ear. He is loud, I tell you what. Uh, Dane? Dane? Hello? Hello, Hello Dane. Dane. Why are you just so away over, over here? here? You're ruining my morning meditation. <sighs> what? Did something happen? What's wrong, Dane? The missing person from your commission. Could you describe them to me? Uh, well, you see, uh, about that. Oh. Uh, uh, Young guy? Early twenties? Seriously, Dane, what's going on? There appear to be certain memories in my mind that weren't there before. Uh-oh. Memories of him. What? Huh? Uh, maybe... Maybe we just talked too much about him yesterday and you had a weird dream or something? No, no. It wasn't a dream. 
their memories. Memories that suddenly appeared in my mind after I woke up, and I'm certain I've never met this person before. Well, what exactly did you remember? I remember handing him the eye of the first field tiller. Uh... What? Okay, so this missing person definitely has something to do with the Abyss Order then. Indeed. And it appears he possesses the ability to implant memories into the minds of others. How is that even possible? Listen, all the memories the villagers have of him they Maybe they never knew him at all. But why would he do something like that? Hmm. Whatever the Abyss Order is planned, an important truth has been revealed to us this morning. What sort of truth? That their goal is still to obtain the Eye of the First Feet. They haven't stopped searching for it. I am the only person who knows its location. Perhaps implanting that particular memory was an attempt to interfere with my mind in some way. Is the eye still safe? What if that memory is real? Your concerns are not entirely unfounded. I don't believe the Abyss Order is capable of altering reality like that just yet. However, considering their single-minded pursuit of the eye, I would see an equal level of caution is in order on our part. Come with me. We must, we must check, check whether, whether the eye is still in our possession. Oh, so you're going to take us to where he went? But, what if someone follows us? If we go straight there and someone is on our trail, aren't we just exposing the eye's location? Maybe that's the reason the abuse order implanted that memory in the first place. To force Dane to confirm the eye's location. Hmm. Given what I know of him, though, I'm sure Dane has already thought of that possibility. It seems like he might already have a plan. Lead the way, Dane. Of course. <laughs> Let me mind telepathy tell you to get the hell out of here. You must leave. You must go. <laughs> fucking falls into a fucking Assassin's Creed loading screen. It's the loading screens in Assassin's Creed are like bright white screens. For anyone who doesn't get that joke and for anyone who's never played an Assassin's Creed game before, when you load in those games, it literally turns your screen solid white and it blinds the shit out of you. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And you have that one guy who's like, I'm talk about the golden apple of the memories of my ancestors. That's a different Assassin's Creed game, but yeah. I don't know, I feel like the Assassin's Creed games are okay, but I only really truly like the ones that focused on Ezio and Self. The other ones were fucking weird. I like the one with Arno. Where he had like the little pocket watch and his dad gets assassinated in like a middle of a public place. And he winds up chasing like this redhead girl that's like his childhood friend who becomes his lover or some shit. I forget which one that was. <sighs> Woo! So you need a way out here? Not an easy place to discover, that's for sure. Anytime this game has a dungeon that is accessible only one time and only one time, you can tell because they usually have it in a cave that goes into a wall that's usually blocked by some fucking galaxy wall teleportation mirror effect. Well, well let's, let's go check to see if it's safe. Yeah, let's do that. Traveler, <laughs> wait. <laughs> yes? Uh. Uh. We've no time, time to lose. Let's head inside. inside. What? What was Dane going to tell me just now? She tells us to wait, but then flies slowly. Um. Uh. I bet you they implanted something in him, so when he goes to tell me something important, they stop him. Dane brings you to where he hid the eye before. As you continue on where the answers will soon be revealed, but when you step within, there seems to be something strange going on with Dane. 
So I need somebody with a lecture on fire. Uh, my team is mostly animo. How is this gonna work? What is this? Uh, I don't know. Uh, my highest, uh, well, I only have two strong pyro fire characters, which is her and him. I don't want to get rid of Chang Yun, but I need you to help me because you have a claymore just like him and you will suffice. Care to join? Is there time, time to speak in some dim sum first? first? Uh, no, we don't have time to eat. What are you, insane? Oh, let me just bring my dumpling. We don't have time for that. I have confidence in Gumming, but I haven't truly been able to build him quite yet. But he does have a Claymore, so he should be able to replace Chang Yun temporarily. I really hope I didn't make a bad mistake, because Chang Yun is one of my strongest characters, and I never take him out of my party ever, but I have no choice. I say that because sometimes these dungeons require you to have an elemental character based on the element they say, because there's usually a puzzle in which you need them. And once you enter, you literally have to back all the way out of the dungeon and restart it. And I've had that happen to me so many times, and it's annoying. So, like, what I mean by that is if they say, oh, you need a, a fire character... I know it's hot, but let me turn my fan off, because I feel like I'm having a show. Basically, if they say you need a fire character, usually what it is, is there's a puzzle in the dungeon in which you need to, like, shoot arrows or something like that. And if you don't have that, you have to back all the way out and restart. And that's happened to me many times before. So I'm like, I don't know what I should do. There are some times, though, where they say you need that element, and you actually kind of don't. You can get through the whole dungeon without needing them. So I'm uncertain. It's probably wise to have... Well, you could probably just glide across like this. <laughs> but I have, in my possession, a character who can fly. So if I come across areas in this dungeon which I can't reach, I'm pretty sure I can use Scar to help get me across. I saw monuments up there, so I think I was right when I said I needed a fire character to do puzzles. Oh god. This looks like Enconomia. It's one of my favorite areas in the game. I have that whole area maxed out. Hmm. Oh dear god, okay. <laughs> Even more uh. Fire! That's what the fire was for, to help them burn. They're dendro enemies. Well, if that was the case, I didn't really need that. Like, my hazel hits like a truck. Yes, the mechanisms here have changed over time. Hmm? You can access the upper floor through the side door. Perhaps you should try reactivating the mechanism over there. It's so hot now that I turn that fan off. I can feel the heat burning around my face. Oh god, I feel like I'm... Ah! I need to put it back on. I can't even breathe. <laughs> It's been so dreadfully hot. Without having a fan on constantly, I feel like I'm being baked alive. I am not even kidding you. I do have slight heat exhaustion because I went walking out in it the other day to the store. Cute little bug insects. Look at this shit. Um, and I do have slight heat exhaustion, so... I'm still trying to recover from it. Look at this chest. Trying to psych me out, bro. You have nothing to say to that? Really? I feel like they are toying with Dane. They're messing with his memories, because he's like, the devices in here have changed, but how could it change if nobody's been here? See how that's not making any sense at all? If this is a place that only Dane knew about, why in God's name would there be creatures and shit in here? <laughs> why would this be here? Get up! 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 Get up. Yeah? Uh, 
Garoth, he's high enough to hit the eye. 